friends, after knowing the important agents, the forces that originated on the surface, that is weathering, their erosion, transportation and deposition. These are the different process involved in creation of landform. In this process, weathering is the first phase and this weathering, the types of weathering, the controlling factors of weathering and the end product of weathering, our engineering concern on this process we have understood. Now how this process lead to different landforms and how they affect our engineering activities, we shall continue. We know erosion, transportation, deposition result in variety of landforms. And these landforms on which we have to operate, we may have a construction, a road, a bridge, a tunnel, a dam, many things. These are all depending on the landform we have to deal with certain engineering. In simple, the different landforms create a different morphological features of the terrain. And morphological features of the terrain influence the engineering activities. Example is a dam, where we construct a dam on the top of the hill, the plain land, no, across the river valley. Where we construct tunnel on the plain land, no, across the hill. Where we construct the bridge, yes, across the river. This river, plain land, mountainous, these are all the result of the combination of a weathering process, a transportation and deposition. I have mentioned here the resistant formation, hill, how they are formed, etc. Thus, they determine the different type of landform, different type of weathering, controlling factor and agents bring about responsible for different type of landforms and we call this geomorphic feature of the land or terrain condition determine the kind of different civil engineering activities. I have just mentioned only few the dams, the tunneling, not restricted only these n number of engineering activities dependent on different type of landforms. Yes, how exactly different are landforms? Especially we Indians located 80%, 90% except the Thar desert region. The Indian landforms are determined by fluvial system. Therefore, I focus more on river system and different, deter, different type of landforms result as a result of river process. Weathering is one process. Once the weathered materials are there, how the river process take into river, causes erosion, transport the material and deposit, thus different landforms are produced. Now, hence, therefore, we will focus on the river as an important geomorphic process and how they bring about different landforms and bring about a different landforms and related engineering activities. Yes, when we say, yes, this is a, say a mountain, from there a river originate and flow into, basically we have, we have the tributaries, a river, these are all the tributaries. These features we call tributaries, these, 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 these are tributaries. River has a tributaries, originate in the mountainous region because of two factors. One, in the mountainous region we have a heavy rainfall. Example, I quote again, this is the Arabian Sea, this is the western ghat like this, rain bearing clouds that hits the western ghat, these clouds are arrested, they cannot rise or scatter and vegetation is there, they become heavy clouds, cause precipitation, therefore rivers are formed in the mountainous region, this is one. Second, I have the steep gradient, 
of the land. Due to percolation of water, if this, this was the original water table, water table, because of heavy rainfall, more percolation may take place. And therefore, water table rises, water table rises, they intersect. The moment water table intersects the ground, we have spring formation. Spring contribute means water flow on the surface and thus we have a river. In the mountainous condition, steep slope where many springs are possible, high rainfall, or melting of snow in all respect, many rivers originate on the mountainous region. The river originate, many tributaries, small channel, channels, they join, river grow in size. And this part of the river where steep gradient, river grows in size, steep gradient, river grows in size, we call mountainous or youthful stage or upper course of the river. If this is the sea, if this is the sea, if this is the river profile and if I extend this landward, this determines the base level of erosion means river do not cut its valley beyond this. This is called base level. Since in the mountainous region base level is high, they cut their valleys, valleys, valleys. So their base level is high. These are characteristic of upper course. As we come to this river flows further, further, the gradient become less and this region we can say. The gradient become less. They uh, moderately, they are nearer to base level but not very close to the base level. So, river, because of sudden change from mountainous to transition zone, river develops a, a meandering path, do not follow straight path, irregular path, meanders are common, their gradient is less, they are more close to the base level, therefore they develop wider valley and the major tributaries that join are also equally larger in size. Therefore, there is a large volume of water to be handled, valley wide is required. This part of the system we call middle course of the river, transition phase of the river and as we go further down close to the sea level, they almost have lost their gradient very close to the base level, they have loaded with enough of sediment, they have brought huge volume of water and there they may drop those sediments here and the dropped sediments may obstruct the river flow and therefore river splits into and they form deposit the material delta and river join. Thus river join the sea in the coastal belt, in the coastal belt there is a, drastically the gradient is reduced. They are very close to the base level. They are no more able to carry the sediment, they tend to drop the sediment. No more they are capable of erosion because erosion means transportation erosion are governed by the energy available. Gradient is one factor that determines the energy. Therefore and they have lost so much of energy and they are no more capable of tra transporting or eroding. Therefore, all that material they tend to drop. Therefore, in this process, deposition is a dominant process. Deposition and transportation, erosion, all are equally dominant. Here only erosion and transportation is the dominant, no deposition. Thus we can classify the river into different stages. These are the major division and these are common mouth region. This is the river profile we call a longitudinal profile of the river 
ideally here more gradient, less gradient, no gradient, etc. Deep base level of origin, moderate base level, close to base level, very narrow valleys, more tributaries join a river grows, tributaries that join are very significant in size, the river follows a zigzag path, more meandering path like this, here more delta, here tributaries join, number of tributaries may not join that much, but existing tributaries they tend to split and join the sea. These are in general basic characteristics of a river, how they are important in engineering. Just simple example I am giving, this is a Netravati river basin, you find these are so many tributaries and if you see the number of tributaries per square kilometer, number of the tributaries per square kilometer is less obviously. Now you see the more elongated their size you find this river characteristic change with the course of the river. This is a typical example of a drainage. Now, Upper, character, upper course of the river, just now I have mentioned upper course, middle course and lower course, river mouth, coastal belt, transition stage, middle course, upper stage. In the upper course, the cross profile, cross section of the river valley is like this, narrow, V-shape, gorges are formed, deep valley is formed. How this? Originally, this was the landform, they cut into like this, such V-shaped that is due to vertical erosion, cutting deeper, deeper because their base level is deep. Till they reach the base level, they can cut, they can cut, they can cut, they can cut like that. Therefore, narrow V-shaped valleys are developed in the upper course. More hydraulic action, swirling, whirling, uh, removal, material, abrasion, attrition dominant process traction, sediments are dragged along the river bottom, series of jumping and bumping movement. If this, what is the saltation? Suppose this is a river bed, uh, it is flowing like this. If there is a material, because of impact, river carries some particles. The particle which carried by river hits the bottom and there are some particles in the bottom. It gives momentum to this particle, it means I suppose this is the river bed, I have different particles all along. A river flowing also carrying particle, that particle hits this particle, gives momentum to this particle and this particle jumps. This particle go and sit on this this particle which jumps and fall on this particle, gives momentum to it, this particle lifted, this particle occupies. The lifted particle who go and hits the another particle, this particle occupies its position, this particle gives momentum. Like a cocoa they play. This with a two series of jumping and bumping movement, particles are lifted from one place to another. At the same time, they hit the another particle and during that process, they may break, collide. Thus, materials are reduced to smaller and smaller size. There is a kind of particle reduction and the movement lifting. That process is called saltation. These are common. So, traction, a river bottom, Larger particles are dragged along the bottom. Particles or fragments are constant contact with the bed. That is attraction is common. Hydraulic and abrasion in a high mountainous region, if there is small cracks, the whirling concentration erosion forces are concentrated by hydraulic action. They widen, they remove the material, erode the material. These are all common in upper course of the river. Load size is a large, but they are all angular. In fact, broken rock fragments are angular in size. And V-shaped valleys are developed. This is common in the upper course of the river. 
what are the characteristics the gradient is high 400 minus 100 say 300 meter difference the gradient is high these are the common erosional process traction saltation hydraulic action etc are common abrasion etc attrition particle hitting each other why v shaped valley narrow valley vertical cutting are common in upper course of the river as we go from upper course to middle course this is a transition between this and this here base level is moderate therefore the wider valleys are formed the river cut the river cut the river cut the river cut the wider valleys channel is deeper and wider it is not that deep but deeper than here they are wider as well vertical erosion is decreasing in importance more lateral weathering, more deeper weathering, not there. Side weathering, yes. Lateral weathering, yes. So, deeper weathering is restricted, limited, reduced. Side cutting is increased. As a result, wider and wider valley is formed. Eroded materials are temporarily deposited. There is a partially deposited sudden and there is both erosion as well as a deposition. The deposited material, if a river is flowing, it brought from some material, deposits here, and this deposited material act as a barrier. River swings around it and may cause further and thus bending is possible. Suspension is the main, uh, main transportation. They have brought here traction, at the most here saltation is possible, but as much as possible suspension per materials permanently lifted in water, transported. Load becomes smaller and less angular. Materials in the mountainous region, huge boulders like as you come here middle course, the size of the materials are reduced, smaller and they are less angular because they are transported for a longer distance during this wear and tear, larger coarse materials, angularity all removed, materials in, we find in the river bed are relatively smaller, relatively rounded, less angular. As you reach the coastal bed, they are close to sea level, base level is very less. What is the base level? That sea level, if I extend the landward, that determines ultimate level up to which a river can erode. It's a bed, that's the base level. So, channel is at the widest here. They are not very deep. At its widest and not deepest. They are not deep and maybe tidal. There is a maybe tidal effect is there. Deposition is more important than any other erosion transportation. Fine materials are deposited along the coast. We don't find any pebbles, boulders, etc. In the river bed we find, but in the lower course, close to the coastal belt, we only find sand, very rarely pebbles. We may find gravels. Large amount of load, but the size is very small. Enormous sediments they bring, but size of the material is very less and they are better rounded. So, these are common in the lower course. Therefore, depending on the course of the river, nature of erosion and nature of a material, nature of the, all this river valley, morphological characteristics, everything well. So, one question arises is, Suppose this is a base level, a river started eroding, started eroding, started eroding. We know it also reached base level. This is the base level. A river reached its base level, and once it reaches the base level, what it means? this much of load they have deposited here. So, in here 
sediment load accumulated is so high one and here they are no longer able to erode because their erosion ability is by virtue of a gradient, gradient they have lost, they have reached the base level. What may happen? One thing is a more or less a plain land developed fine, but what will happen to the river? It is no longer able to transport material, no erosion and that is the place where time enough load they have transferred to the sea and sea bottom is so much overloaded if they transfer the pressure and they transfer the pressure and because of this land may rise this process is called a rejuvenation once the river reaches the base level of erosion there is a possibility that the land form get rejuvenated because it has enormous load it has transferred to the sea and sea is loaded somewhere that pressure and it has to distribute the pressure isostatic equilibrium load distribution uniformly they have to balance therefore they uh, transfer the load and that then river value originally it had a reached base level again uplifted when the river valley is uplifted we call rejuvenation it has its own influence on the land form yes we have just now mentioned the river i have shown now we are trying to understand the river with reference to engineering activities will go further. This is a longitudinal river profile just now I have mentioned ultimate level, base level like that high steep gradient, moderate gradient, gentle gradient, low gradient. This is a longitudinal river profile and this region we call headwater where river originates and starts growing. Yes. It is the characteristic of a river general idealized character. Say suppose these are the mountainous region. Now I have mentioned one, two, three, four like that. Suppose suppose this is a river. This is a one tributary. This is another tributary. This tributary is not further branched out, and this is has no further branched out. I call it is one one. And for example, this also one one. It has only one branch. Now, this tributary is not branched out. This is one. Now, this tributary has no further branch, no further branch, no further branch, and I have called them one one. And when one and one together join here onwards, their order changes into two. One one here onwards they become two. One not plus the first order, first order they do not have any branching. They, the tributary is of same level branching one and one meet their hierarchy increases they become order two. Here to here is two order, here to here order therefore here onwards it is three this is here to your three order. If one order joins to three, its order does not change, remain three or. If again one more, one more, one more, right? First order, first order, first order, first order, this is a second order. And this may be one more order, first, first, this is second order, second order, second order, here it is a third, this is a third, here onwards it can be four. That is how we have to do. 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2 with a third order, correct? This also 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, this also 2, therefore here onwards they have third, third and this also third, this also third, here it became fourth order. Here to here fourth order, here also fourth order, the order changes 5. Thus, the higher the order, what do you mean by 
if instead of 5 use, if it's 6, 7, 8, 9, it is a well developed drainage system. We have number of tributaries are more that determine the size of the river, how best the drainage is developed. This drainage ordering is first step in understanding the river basin. It's a characteristic, it's a size, correct? So, we try the drainage ordering. You can see now, how I have developed the repeating. First order, first order, here onwards second. For here to here, it is second. For second, first joints, order no change, second continues. First to first, here onwards second, second. One, one here on our second. So this becomes third here like this. Thus order as you go higher and higher. Assigning number to the streams based upon their position within the river tributary system. Segment with no tributaries is a first order. Two first order stream joint form a second order and so on. Only where two segments of equal magnitude join, the next number is assigned. First and first join, two. Two and two join, three. Two and one, no change. Of equal magnitude, they join, then only their order of changes. Segment with no tributaries, it descended the first order. It has no further branching. It's the first order. This is the scheme of ordering. Now, this is very important based on here also we have first order, first order, first order, first order, but the pattern is different. Depending on this pattern, we are going to understand the drainage system. Now you see, these are all tree-like pattern, irregular branching pattern, tree-like in many direction, in all the direction. It is common in massive rock and in flat lying strata. Underlying rocks are uniform in resistance. This kind of drainage system is developed. Due to strong resistance of the rock, <coughs> head door developed a valley is negligible. They do not grow like this, they do not grow like this, but they tend to grow laterally like this. So rocks below the river is more or less uniform, uniformly they develop. There is nothing like preferred direction. Therefore, such a kind of drainage we call dendritic drainage pattern, tree-like drainage pattern. Another is, see, more or less they are all parallel. This is parallel, this is more parallel, parallel. Parallel, parallel, parallel. See, this is more parallel or sub parallel drainage pattern on the sloping surface. Common in terrain with homogeneous rock, but fractures or joints. Rocks may be granite everywhere. Here also granite everywhere, but no fractures, joints, massive, but here they have joints. So, development of parallel rills, gullies, narrow channels, commonly seen in gently sloping surface. Gently sloping surface, joint fractures facilitate this kind of a drainage system. It's a parallel pattern. This is another radial pattern, especially common volcanic landform. We have a landform from a common center, drainage flows away, volcanic terrain perhaps erupted and drainage flows away from this common center, common center, common center, common center. It is common in every volcanic eruption. After volcanic eruption, there is a rainfall, heavy rainfall. So, volcano, large lava on volcanic eruption, they eject so much of water vapor to the atmosphere and they call precipitation. So, huge amount of rain 
and they require and obviously they flow all direction like this. So from central part, initially drainage is developed. Henceforth, that path serves as a avenue for path for further flow. Thus, from a common center volcanic terrain, a, this kind of drainage system is developed. That is, they appear to generate from a common center flow in a different direction. Here you have this is a tributary, this is another tributary, this is another tributary, this is another tributary, like this, like this. You see, for this, this is perpendicular, for this, this is perpendicular, this is perpendicular, for this is this perpendicular. Tributaries join their next order more or less perpendicular right angle bends. And this kind of bending is possible if rocks are jointed. This is one river, river flows, another tributary come like this. So wherever rocks are jointed, presence of joints and fractures in massive rock, foliation less, foliation was more common in previous parallel pattern. Here also no doubt foliation, but more common in there. So this kind of pattern where tributaries join the next higher order tributaries more or less at a right angle, this is called rectangular drainage pattern. This is another trellis pattern. This is rectangular arrangement of channel. And this is principal tributary streams are parallel and very long. Tributary is also long enough. They, it was not very long in the previous case. This pattern is common in area where outcropping edges of folded sedimentary rocks. There, this kind of structure means drainage pattern reflect the kind of rocks below it, the kind of structure below it. This is annular stream follow nearly circular, nearly circular, nearly circular, nearly circular. They are all follow more or less circular concentric path where weak rock that, that a dissected dome or basin, ring or dissected dome or basin like erosion has exposed successive belt. We have different metamorphic rock of varying degree of ero erodibility, resistance, etc. This kind of patterns are found. So this is drainage ordering. Now what is bifurcation ratio? This is another important. We are going to deal with watershed for their management. Bifurcation ratio is expressed as the ratio of the number of streams of any order. If this is the drainage order like this, first, 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 number of first order, this is second, this is second, second, number of second order. So bifurcation ratio is the ratio of the number of streams of any order to the number of streams of the next order, first order to second, second to third, third to fourth, like that. That is number of order. Number n is the number of streams of a given order, n plus 1 is the next given higher order. Higher bifurcation ratio, higher the ratio, area with the structural control. In a river basin, in some part of the river, some part of the watershed, higher drainage pattern like bifurcation ratio, may be structural control. Low Bifurcation ratio, no structural control, uniform everywhere, uniform condition. It means bifurcation ratio in any part of the watershed or between any particular order, between 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5 like this, between 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, it is more or less same. Then it is uniform. But by chance, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 4 is very high. Between 4 and 5, again 5 and 6, again normal. Then 
between 3 and 4, there is a structural control. So, any deviation from the average of that drainage system implies a structural control. It has an important implication, whether we are constructing a dam or what harvesting structure, etc., many things. Bifurcation ratio is an important parameter for us to plan watershed. Low bifurcation ratio, area with uniform surfacial material, geology reflecting homogeneous, we have between 3 to 5, more than 5, 6, 7 at local, it may indicate some structural disturbance. Another one is a drainage density. Especially flood control, watershed development, we are all concerned with the drainage density. What it means? Drainage density is determined as the ratio of the total streams, stream length to the drainage area. Suppose this is a basin, this is another basin, the total length of all the streams to be there, all the streams to be there may be high for the same area. Here only few drainage total length of all the streams are less, area range the same, total length is more, more drainage density, total drainage area is same, but total length of the streams all together is less, low drainage density. What it means? It means that drainage density is low, means the river did not find a necessity to carve a number of valleys because most of the water was percolating downward. Drainage density is low means possibility that large percolation is possible one way. Or underlying rocks are so hard, river cannot carve number of valleys at all. Therefore, when number of valleys are not there, the length is automatically less. Underlying rocks are very hard. It means there is no per percolation. Therefore, in a given climate, high rainfall, low drainage density means floods should occur. High rainfall, easily they have to drain out. Therefore, high drainage density, no floods. High drainage density, all that water is removed by river, no percolation. So, no percolation, no floods, high rainfall. Maybe here less rainfall or underlying rocks are very hard, possibility, no percolation. But floods may be if high rainfall. Therefore, drainage density is an important parameter for a watershed engineer to understand. High drainage density usually reduce the discharge in a single stream because we have number of tributaries, they drain out easily. So, no such floods like situation. Low drainage density, intense rainfall events likely to result in high discharge and floods, therefore. Yes, stream frequency is another parameter. It is in all respects similar to the drainage density. It is the number of streams per unit area. If a number of streams per unit area is high, number of streams divided by area, that determines the stream frequency. More frequency means well developed drainage system and there is an easy flow of water, no chance of much percolation, no chance of flooding like that. If a low drainage frequency means only few drainages are there, all the water has to flow through this, obviously there is a flood. One second, there is no much chance of percolation. Here, here water spends more time with a the bed, they have to percolate. All that water is percolated, no chance for further development. So, more percolation, possible, more floods, possible, underlying rocks are hard possible, well developed, no floods here, no percolation here, all these are possibilities. So, depending on the climate, I have to understand the 
response or signature of this. Yes. Factor that control development. Just now we have said geology of the area, more or less uniform area, dendritic pattern, hard rock, only few tributaries can develop like that. So basically geology, I have to keep in mind. The structural disturbances, I have a dendritic pattern or rectangular pattern, parallel pattern, etc. or rectangular pattern, example, folding, faulting, joint pattern, etc. They determine. Then the geomorphology of the area. If a terrain itself is very gradient, they do not have time to develop their own number of valleys. They simply drained out. If a terrain is a flatter, to discharge its more water, they need more tributaries. More channels are carved if it is a little gentle because high rainfall, they have to drain out the water. Existing drainage system is not adequate, means river has to carve additional valleys. Therefore, we have high drainage density or frequency. Means topography is another factor. The terrain slope condition, just now we have mentioned like that. Therefore, ultimately these together determine the kind of drainage system and that is an important parameter. For example, river may erode, river may deposit, all this possible. Now what happens? So what are the features of river erosion if river carves? River erosion, beautiful waterfalls are, waterfalls are developed. Generally, these are common in rejuvenated river valleys. In upper course of the river, river valley, if bedrocks are of a different hardness, softer rocks are weathered faster, then we have the chances of waterfall. Another feature is, this is another erosion River carves, its, if river is flowing like this, if there is some obstruction, it tends to bend and then flow. To form, they carve, they erode and thus form. River erode their valley and form a path and thus meandering is a process of erosion. Why a river has to cut a long, there is an obstruction one way, possible. If the river has to discharge in a given time, for example, it has to discharge all its water in five hours. If it has to discharge in eight hours, water has to be stored in the land for some more period. How it is possible? Then a river carves a longer route. It keeps flowing, but distance is more, therefore long time. Means it is a principle of equilibrium. River carves its meander because it, the river has to take more time to reach the sea and therefore if it is through a longer path, obviously it can be achieved. To achieve the longer path, a river follow a zigzag path, meandering path, not a straight path, a linear The river meanders. Yes, it is through erosion. One. Second, during course of a heavy flood, the river may have to discharge all its water suddenly at a short as possible time. Then what it does? It then leaves out this path and cuts the shortcut. River had carved a meander like this during normal time, but during flood it has to discharge all its water, again cuts a short path leaving behind this. Now this is the feature. So curved path they may leave out, river may cut meanders, abandon meanders, depends on the situation how nicely they are able to adjust themselves with the surrounding situation. We must able to understand the process if I have to do engineering with it. Thus, often 
if this is the case, how I have to deal with it? So, waterfall or meanders are the signboards of river process and river action and accordingly I have to deal with them for engineering project. Yes. There are different types of erosional features. In the upper course Gokak riverbed, this is a Ganesh Fall for Gangoli river like that uh, Gangauli, Bedti like, like Agnashini etc. These are common. So, this is a hydraulic action, abrasion, common in hard rock terrain, mountainous upper course of the river. Potholes are common in upper course of the river where hydraulic action, no removal chemical within, physical within, like then upper course of the river, hard bedrock. What it means, I have a message. These are all common in upper course, hard bedrock, where vertical erosion is common. It means nearby there may be a gorge like, deep valley like, waterfall like, Gokak river bed above the waterfall you see, so beautiful potholes and then within 100 meter down you have a waterfall. And below the waterfall, again riverbed you go and watch, you do not find that many what potholes. So potholes are signboard of upper course of a river, the presence of waterfall, presence of gorges, that means bedrock, hard bedrock, means suitable for construction of dam like, yes. How waterfall is formed? Again. If we have a hard rock and soft rock, river flowing over this, they may carve the soft rock faster, soft rock eroded faster and the means suppose a river is flow, sorry, a river is flowing like this, we have different type of rocks, soft rocks. River erodes its soft rocks, soft rocks, soft rocks are eroded. Then this also, therefore, if soft rocks are removed and we have this river flows like this waterfall. So waterfall is because of a differential erosion. Hard rocks less erosion, soft rock more erosion. Continuous, continuous, a depression pond like this we call plunge pools. You have heard, we have heard, often flint pools are so like this, like this and often they cut channels in Bhirti river tributary, we have Shivaganga where tunnels are like, Shinteri rocks, Kali river, yes tunnel like, people tempted to jump into water, in, this is a pool like standing water they feel or playing but they will be dragged into this and trapped inside it happens. So plunge pools are also developed. So due to waterfall. What is the message of this? One is a plunge pool, it's a common risk. Waterfall is a sudden change in the gradient. That is an ideal where we get the head difference and therefore we can think of a construction of a dam generate electricity. So, these features are common in upper course of the river, mountainous course of the river. Yes, then meanders. So, we have river flowing in a zigzag path, zigzag path. River do not follow straight path, they follow zigzag path. The curved path of the river is called meander, just now we have said. It is commonly found in lower course and also in the middle course. Lower course more common, in the middle course com less common. But we do find the curvature is so high here, but its curvature is less here, these are means per kilometer length, the number of meanders can be more in the lower course 
such a number of meanders are less in the middle course. So, middle course of the river or lower course of the river meanders are formed and they are due to both erosion as well as a deposition. Number of bends and convexity of the bend is higher in the lower course. They are formed both due to erosion and deposition. Indication is change in the gradient from upper course to the lower or upper course to middle, middle to the lower course. This is a satellite image of coastal Karnataka, South Kendra coast. So, during floods, they may leave the bend they may leave the bend and then they follow. We have the abandoned path, you know, like develop oxbow or lakes, oxbow bend. Yes, this is how the meanders are formed. River flowing like this, if they come across somewhere, some obstacles they tend to, if somewhere obstacles they tend to flow. Once they tend to flow like this, velocity in this part is reduced river forces low energy high energy high energy they erode high erode they erode low energy they deposit the material this deposited material further facilitate the river shifting thus meanders are developed meanders are develop develop so much like once upon a time they see curvature increases, curvature increases, increases. During flood, they may find short route is needed. They leave this part and flow in a shortest path and the left out uh, materials are filled up and river henceforth follow and this left out is called meander oxbow. If they are filled with water, oxbow lake. If they are not filled with water, oxbow meanders. In a topography, if we have a river like this, we may have this part, but if river today is like this, today, but number of lakes, ponds in a line, perhaps they represent older ancient landforms, meandering path, etc. So, the pattern is very important for us. Friends, we will continue our discussions on levees. So, we have discussed how erosion, how the deposition and erosion are together result in different type of landform, especially in the river dominant system. Now, henceforth, only the deposition we shall try to understand.